Hi, and welcome to the Lemonade Car Show on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Lorraine Sommerfeld. Tonight, as always, we'll be answering all of your car-related questions. The Lemonade Car Show is brought to you by OMVIC, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator, and produced by the Automobile Protection Association. The APA is a consumer association. It's membership-based and nonprofit, so we benefit you, the consumer. You can reach us at apa.ca or by phone at 416-204-1444. Joining me today is Terry O'Keefe. He's Director of Communications with OMVIC, and Michael Turk. He's a lawyer with the APA. Call us this evening at 800-968-7836. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Always a pleasure. Nice to have you back, Terry. Michael, I heard you made a lovely Lorraine last week, so thank you for that. Oh, it's my pleasure. I was just more, most worried that people wouldn't notice. That, you know. that would have been fun. <laughs> Actually, some probably didn't. It was the glasses that gave them away. That was it. Okay, I'm going to go with that because I don't. Because <laughs> no, I, you know, I have longer hair than you. That's it. You know that that, that would have been the problem. We have found the key differences. Michael Turk mm -hmm. has longer hair and glasses on. That's great. <laughs> Terry, this is your first visit this season with us. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sometimes they mash together. Omvic provides a really, really important service and. As much as we'll f we are familiarizing viewers and consumers about it, it's always good to go over it again. Maybe you can tell us, most of us encounter OMVIC right when we buy a new car and see that line on the sales contract. So maybe start there and just tell us a little bit about what that's. Yeah, so most dealers, uh, when they sell a new vehicle, you'll see a line item on the bill of sale at a $10 OMVIC fee. And that $10 uh, is remitted to OMVIC by the dealer, and that's what pays our, uh, most of our, our operating expenses. OMVIC is the regulator. You know, we, we're a law enforcement agency, and our, our job is to protect consumers. And we do that a number of ways. We register all dealers and salespeople. By law, they must be registered with OMVIC. Uh, we conduct inspections of all dealerships. We investigate industry misconduct, illegal sales uh, by curbsiders, and uh, one of the other important uh, services we provide to consumers is an absolutely free conciliation service so that if a consumer does have a problem with a registered dealer they can come to OMVIC and ask for help and we will try to negotiate a settlement that's that's amicable, amicable uh, for them. Does is there a way that if I go to a dealer should I be making sure that they're a member of OMVIC like is that you said they all are that means when you're investigating people, there must be some that aren't or that misrepresent themselves. How, how, as a consumer, how do I check that they're under your umbrella? That's a great question because actually we're seeing more and more today curbsiders, which are these illegal unlicensed dealers. Mm -hmm. Commonly they pose as private sellers. But more and more we're actually seeing them operating from small automotive related businesses, repair shops and that type of thing. And so consumers might think they're actually dealing with a small dealership when in fact they're not. So there's a number of things that you can do. The two easiest and fastest, go online. Go to OMVIC's website, omvic.ca, top right corner, you can search to find out if that dealer or that salesperson is actually registered. And if they're not, run and please report them. And the other thing that you can do that's even easier is simply say, can I see your OMVIC license? Okay. And by law, they have to pull it out and show it to you if you've asked to see it. Now, is that renewed every year? So if they've got an old certificate, it's dated or? They are dated. Okay. Uh, salespeople renew their license every two years and dealerships renew annually. Okay. Any of my tax money go to you guys or is this all run? Not one penny. Okay. Uh, we, we receive no funding from the government. In fact, we actually pay an oversight fee to the government. Are oh, you still do? Yes. Wow, okay. So how does that work? Like, does the government, can they come to you and say we're having problems? Like are you really an intermediary or does it kind of stop with you? Uh, th it gets technical now. We are a delegated authority. Okay. So the government has delegated responsibility to administer and enforce the Motor Vehicle Dealers Act and the Consumer Protection Act to OMVIC. Okay. And so that is our role. So that's good for consumers, it's like one-stop shopping, because Michael, we've talked a lot about the different layers of consumer protection that are in place, but you guys represent the legal Well, and especially ones. because a number of years, well, I mean, probably maybe 10 or 15 years ago, the budgets were slashed so drastically at the Ministry of, Com of Consumer and Commercial Relations, as it was called then, that if you had a problem with, with your vehicle or any consumer protection issue, the staff at the ministry was such bare bones, you weren't getting any satisfaction. So when OMVIC was, uh, was created, it essentially took the responsibility away from the government, and now that there's actually been phenomenal consumer protection, be principally because of OMVIC and the way that it's being run. What a nice thing to say. But it's, it's true. It's That's a fact. cool. It's a fact. 
when should somebody call Omvic? If I go to a dealer and I buy a car and then five months later I'm, you know, the brakes go and they're not honoring what I think is the warranty, is that the time I call Omvic or the APA? Where do you guys kick in realistically? Well, of course, we, in a situation like that, we would always want to know that the consumer has tried to solve that problem okay. himself. Um, but yes, if, if you have tried to solve the problem yourself, if you've put your concerns in writing and you don't believe you're being treated fairly at that point in time, you can either uh, file your complaint online with us or you can call our complaints and handling uh, complaints and inquiries team and they'd be uh, more than happy to assist. And you don't, you don't have to buy a car to call and talk to one of our complaint and inquiries staff. If you've got a question before you buy, call and it's absolutely free to consumers. Call and ask the question because if, that, that's probably the way you're gonna avoid a problem in the first place. Okay, any callers tonight? If you've got questions for Terry and Michael, now's a great time to ask consumer stuff about OMVIC because it's good to explain all this. Michael, a question that I hear a lot and I'm sure you do as well is what is a reasonable, what's a reasonable mean? When I say to, somebody has said to me, I've gone back to the dealer or the repair shop or whatever, you know, how many times is reasonable? Five, ten, two? Some people think one is reasonable and then, you know, they're angry about it. How do we, how do you guys, both of you, determine that somebody has taken reasonable lengths to let them fix a problem? Well, I, I, it's elastic. I say that because it depends on the nature of the problem or the nature of the repair. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you're always going to want to give the dealership at least one opportunity to remedy the situation. Okay. If that's unsuccessful, and they're asking me, I would say take it back twice. Okay. Um, I mean, there's no, there's no, there's no there's law no hard, um, line. in support yeah. of that. But I always think, you know, that if, you're, if you end up having to take this dealer to court with respect to your complaint, the first thing the judge is going to ask you, well, what steps did you give the, mm -hmm. you know, the garage or the automaker or the mm -hmm. dealer to repair the, to repair the vehicle? And when you say none, the judge doesn't want to hear that. The yeah. judge wants to hear that you're reasonable in giving them an opportunity to fix it. I think two times for sure. Whether you go back a third time, I'd want to know more specifics, you know, you know of the facts of, your, of a particular case. What's difficult sometimes is somebody will go in, and we get calls like this all the time, and they say there's been this noise, they fixed it, it came back a day later, they went back again. And a lot of times this is right around the warranty, like it's straddling the warranty period. And it's almost like the problem sort of morphs and sort of doesn't, was never really fixed once. And I find a lot of times these are the people that have gone back five or six times and they're exasperated, but they don't know where else to go. And I, I agree with them. It's like you don't know, but it, if the problem's changing and morphing, does that more APA stuff? Is that more OMVIC stuff? Well, what, who steps in? It might be a combination of the two, but it's really the biggest challenge when you have an intermittent problem or something that you know that starts off in one component and then creates another type of problem is is documenting it and being able to replicate that situation at the dealership or at a third party garage who's trying to give you an independent opinion. The third party garages do they fall under Omvix? It's just selling. It's just cars yeah, that are we, being we, sold. We don't regulate repair facilities okay. per se. It's 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 dealers. It's dealers. Yes. But but how about the repair work that dealers do? No? If a consumer had an issue with repair work done at, at the dealership, dealer? that Possibly. perhaps if they have a concern that it, something might have breached the Consumer Protection Act, because repairs are covered under the CPA, uh, then yes, OMVIC would, would be interested in, in trying to assist that consumer. Uh, you know, Michael alluded to perhaps you know, ha it having to go before a, a court or a judge one day. And I don't mind telling you, not every consumer who comes to OMVIC that's got a complaint with a dealership is, is happy that their problem gets solved. Um, we don't have the authority to make a dealership conduct repairs, to give back money, to take back a vehicle. The police don't have that authority. You know, we live in a, in a society based on the rule of law and due process, and only the courts have that authority. But that's not to say that our complaint handlers won't attempt to find a reasonable solution to the problem. If, if I call OMVIC and you guys go to bat for me, does that remove my right to maybe sue later down the road not in a all. court? Absolutely not. And, and the other thing, Lorraine, is that when you do contact OMVIC, I mean, it's conciliatory, but I can tell you that no dealer wants to get the phone call from an investigator or from the complaints department from OMVIC. Saying we're coming in. <laughs> or just, I mean, it, just to make the inquiry. Yeah. It's stressful and it goes on their record of, of the dealership. So even if OMVIC isn't successful, the, the, you know, the, the chapter has been opened 
with respect to this particular dealership. So it's in everybody's best interest to get this solved so that everyone is cool with it. And to, and to make the complaint okay. because... One second when we come back. The Lemonade Car Show brought to you by Onvic. Ontario's motor vehicle sales regulator returns after this short break. When we come back, we'll be taking more of your calls. 800-968-7836.